Hello everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction. Today we're going to be listening to Diana Ankudinova sing Can't Help Falling in Love on what I believe is the Russian version of The Voice, essentially, this competition that she was in. I've been getting request upon request upon request to listen to her. There, there are a, a bunch of claims about her being a dramatic contralto, which is a very, very rare voice type, really only used in the operatic world. Um, it's really a Fach, which in the German Fach system for vocal classification. It's a very specific voice type. Um, so we're going to be checking out that today, and I'm very excited. I have not listened to it yet. I have heard so many good things. Basically, on all my Dimash videos, there is uh, hundreds of recommendations for me to listen to this, this young star. So we're doing that. Guys, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel help my channel grow. It's been growing so well lately, and it's very exciting for me to see that happening. Uh, very, very awesome. So shouts to all you guys for the support. And if you really like what I'm doing, if you're finding more value in your listening experience from listening to my commentary, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And the description, along with everything else, is or the, the link is in the description below, along with links to my social media and such merchandise, other good stuff like that. Um, but without further ado, I know why you guys are here. You want to uh, watch me freak out about this uh, amazing young talent. So let's check out, uh, let's check out this um, amazing rendition of Can't Help Falling in Love, originally by Elvis Presley. What did she go to? Okay, so first of all, yes, very... I, I'm not going to label her dramatic contralto, because like I said, that is an operatic term, and it is a very specific kind of voice used in the opera world to describe basically a contralto, already a very rare voice type, that has just an incredible amount of power in the low range. Enough power in that part of their chest range to still be able to sing over an orchestra. I have performed with one dramatic contralto, um, Charmé. Shout out to Charmé, who has sung at the Metropolitan Opera, which is uh, notoriously one of the best opera houses in the world. And it was absolutely remarkable being next to her in a small rehearsal space, because it was like, when she was in her chest voice, it's just so much power down there. Um, so I don't want to label, label her as that, because I haven't heard her sing any opera, but, what I can say is that she has definitely a very low chest range and a very dark color to her sound, which, yeah, sure. I mean, I feel pretty safe calling her a contralto because of those qualities. Um, a, pretty, a, a very remarkably dark color to her sound. Um, let's, I actually want to go back and um, just get a few pitches there. It seems like we're in F minor. Do, 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 which is the original song by Elvis is in D major. That's why I was looking kind of funny during the intro is because, I mean, it's a love song. It's and not, a, not a sad love song. It's, you know, uplifting and inspiring despite being a, a slow, you know, kind of melodramatic ballad. But then this intro is very much in the minor key. So I was like, whoa, where are we going with this? Am I listening to the right song? We are, in fact, but it's uh, being done in a minor key, which is very interesting. So I just want to go back, get a few, get a few pitches here, see how low she's singing in this section. In G, so I'm singing an octave lower. So 
she's singing C3, C3, D flat three, which yeah, is pretty much as low as you'll hear a woman sing in any context, but, but she's actually able to maintain, I think still vibrato down there. There's a, there's just a hint. There's a hint of vibrato on that. Um, sorry, down here. I was singing. She's singing here. C three D flat D flat three. She is made. There's just a hint of still relaxation and looseness on that D flat. The C sounds like it's getting pretty close to the bottom, but it it loosens up a little bit on that D flat, which means you know if you know under different conditions, especially with something like morning voice. Um, after a long night of drinking or something, she could probably push well below that C3 down into the second octave, which is truly, truly rare. Um, very cool, let's keep going. And of course, with that very dark, very dark color, that, that very warm, chocolatey color in her voice. It's really a, it's really a, a a pleasant voice I'll say it has it just has a very warm kind of easy relaxed feel to it you know there's no extra pressure there's not a lot of uh, subglottal pressure which means the vocal folds are coming together super tight to get a very to get a sound with a lot of cut and a lot of high harmonic resonance she's staying very much in this just relaxed using the air everything's very free coming out um it's it's just very it's very easy singing it's very easy singing so it's very pleasing i am real i'm really taken by this arrangement i think it's fascinating and so different from the original if you just just pop over and listen to elvis and and the arrangement he does with this song it's so radically different both in instrumentation and how and ob obviously the key is different the chords are different because Elvis is major, this one's minor. And the other little melodic and harmonic patterns happening with the instrumentation is all different. And it's it's just never a way, it's just never a, I wouldn't have imagined this song being done in such a way. And I think it not only is very cool, but it's also fitting for her voice because she doesn't have the voice from what I can tell to, to like her voice wouldn't gel as well with something really like, like peppy or not to say the original is peppy, but just her voice seems very well suited for this more kind of dark, dramatic feel to it. And so I think the producers of this show and the music directors, I'm sure were, are playing towards her strengths, strengths in the sense that they're you, that she's able to capitalize on this dark, more dramatic, sounding voice that she has that's very interesting but uh so her voice is very interesting and this arrangement is also very interesting Ooh, that was cool. So there was a lot of, um, there's some interesting chest voice to head voice and then in a mixed voice happening there. Let's get some pitches. Chest voice, chest voice, head voice. Head voice. I think compresses into chest voice on her way up is what it sounds like to me. Ooh, 
or maybe she just maybe it's a, maybe she remains in a sort of more breathy, airy chest voice, and then takes that up. One more time. Yeah, I'm going to take back what I first said. I'm going to say that she remains in chest voice. At least she, I think she takes a breath before that. You. So I think she goes falling in love uh, in head voice. So that she goes up a few notes, chest voice, switches to head voice. Then before you, switches back to chest voice, a breath, like a breathy version. You. And then compresses it to get up to that high note which is a C5, so tenor, tenor high C there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's happening. <laughs> but she's up to F5, sorry, that's six. F5, E flat five, C5, and this of this of course is all in head voice. So she's not she's not letting chest voice belting rip up there. This is this is all head voice for this moment. For these, uh, I'll go back a few seconds. So up to B flat five, so almost up to that that soprano high C. So really showing an extremely wide range, wide vocal range here from those cavernous, low, super dark chest voice all the way down to a C3, all the way up to a B flat five. So almost three octaves we've seen in this piece. <laughs> that what that is the that is one of the craziest timbres I've I've heard come out of a person and not expected at all. Okay, so we compare what just happened to the start. So in the start, she was singing with that chest voice, and we you could tell it's very dark very low but she wasn't putting any power behind it now i see why people are calling her dramatic contralto i still am not going to say that because it's still so far outside of an operatic context um and it's amplified and all this so there's just no way to tell how loud and powerful her voice would actually be off mic it sounds powerful but unfortunately that's no there's that's not an automatic indication that's why opera house is pretty much will never hire someone based on recordings. They have to hear that voice in person live because you just can't tell the true size of a voice, even with no microphones involved, even a totally raw uh, performance. So there's too many factors for me to, to, to just slap the label dramatic contralto, but she clearly does have some, some strong chest voice belting. But the timbre is what I'm absolutely fascinated by because she comes out of this high head voice and comes into this, this strong, super, I mean, like super dark 
timbre. Um, which is just, I mean, it, it sounds, it sounds so dark that it sounds modulated. Like it sounds like you took someone's voice and then pitched it down because that like messes with all the formants that happen in the voice. Formants are basically a reflection of the shape of the vocal tract. And so when you shift something down in an audio workstation without accounting for the formants, you get this soup. It's basically like the throat's getting like bigger and bigger. So if you if I were to sing, Ooh, then if I started shifting the formants, it would sound like this. Or like as it as it went down, it would that would happen to the voice. So maybe a better example would be if I was talking and then went down and then I didn't change the formants and it just was like this and it got really muffled down here. Sounds like super wonky, right? It's because I'm intentionally manipulating it. I'm pulling my tongue back to darken it and I'm making my pharynx like super wide to give it that dark, really dark space. Like that's like that's like how her voice sounds, but it's happening it's happening in a much more natural way than what I was just doing. So I'm just absolutely fascinated by <laughs> by what's happening there. And now I'm now I'm desperate to hear her sing something with no microphone and no sound system, like just raw. Because I don't think they're manipulating it. Otherwise, like why would this be such a special voice if they just made it sound like that? So I think there really is something to it, but I just want to hear what it sounds totally raw. Because, you know, e even in live performance, there's plenty of editing that can happen through the, because the mic, the signal from the microphone, the audio, the, the actual audio, so the sound waves get translated into, basically get coded digitally into binary code. And then that code is sent electronically through a system and then it's processed and then sent out through the amplification. So there's, there are places in there where the signal can be manipulated just like it would in an audio workstation and it, and it can be done in real time. So it would be possible, totally possible. I mean, plenty of artists do this not to hide their voice, like as an effect kind of thing. It would be possible to, to manipulate her voice in real time, even on a show like this, even when performed live. Um, but I don't think that's happening in the way that would make it like a totally fake sound. I think her voice is just crazy, crazy dark. But I want to listen to this again. I want to listen to this transition from this, this high stuff, this high head voice into this, <laughs> this wildly dark uh, chest voice belting she does. There it is. Let's gotta go back a bit more. There, there, there. There's that high B flat mouth right there. The, like wide open. He's ready. He knows. I don't think let me go back oh you know what I was thinking about um, in my last Dimash video I was like show me your tongue I want to see your tongue because the tongue is by far the biggest manipulator of not only vowel but also resonance and the resonant structure of your sound so like I can sing all, all the let's say the five main Italian vowels e e a o u all with one mouth position. Because the tongue is what's doing almost all the work when you do that, um, which is really fascinating. So now I want to go back and see what her tongue's doing. And I was joking about making a shirt that says, show me your tongue and putting it up with the rest of my merchandise. <laughs> uh, but let's, uh, let's go back and see if we can see what her tongue's doing. Because like I 
demonstrated a minute ago, it sounds like the tongue is like way back and it's all this for like low larynx and the tongue's pulled way back and it's making this like super muffled sound. But I don't think that's happening with her. I think she just has that sound naturally or almost into, maybe there's some kind of tongue manipulation, but not not like what I was just doing. So let's go but see if, see if we can get a look at her tongue here. Let's see. Her tongue's fine. Her tongue's like all the way forward. I don't think she's doing anything. It's a very healthy looking tongue position. Good for you, Diana. Oh, it's a great tongue position. It's a great tongue. It's just perfectly flat with the tip of the tongue resting on the back of the bottom row of teeth. That's that's what you want. You want a relaxed tongue sitting right there, especially on an ah vowel. Um, love, love with you. That's what you want. So she's got a great, healthy tongue position. Holy shit. What a... Man, this was... I gotta admit, when I started the video, I was like, okay, cool, she's got a, she's got a low voice, nice. Um, okay, she's got high notes, cool, you know, cool. This last verse is like, like, I've, I've never heard anything like it. Crazy, crazy cool voice. Um, I'm very excited to watch more of this young singer. Uh, people said she's 16, is that right? Um, wow. Fantastic. Okay. Well, this was a first time reaction and analysis of Can't Help Fall in Love by uh, Adina Ankudinova. And um, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed, please like, please subscribe, please uh, consider donating to my Patreon. Help support me as a young, uh, young professional opera singer um, and a content creator. You know, my Patreon is how uh, a decent chunk of that income comes in. So, Thank you all for the support. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, and um, I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.